All right, it's crazy cold and lots of snow out in uh, in Ohio. So uh, time to turn some attention back to some indoor projects. Uh, gonna be doing, this is the seventh installment of the historical bike build series. And we're gonna take it indoors to escape the cold a little bit. And uh, gonna be working on the back sprocket. So, removing the existing tire and then installing the new back sprocket uh, this is a uh, bike that has a coaster brake which if you're not familiar with that term it means that it's kind of like old school when you were a kid you'd push back on the pedal and that would uh you know stop the bike there would be no no hand brakes or none of the you know the clamp type uh, brakes that go around the rim so, and the way that works is that when you uh, push the pedals backwards, so the opposite way of pedaling, um, it actually engages two little uh, pieces of brake shoes inside that drum right there. So the tire, you know, where the spokes go into the center, uh, that's the drum in there. And there's two little teeny tiny um, brake pads in there, kind of similar to like a, how a drum unit works on, on your car. And this just operates on friction. So you push back on the pedal and that pushes pressure on those little pads that push outward. And then that stops the wheel uh, from turning. So what you gotta do is you gotta get rid of that arm and that arm is part of the brake system. And this, a lot of this is just unscrewing and screwing, just getting the right wrenches and stuff out here. Um, this bike, uh, again, if you've been following the series, was found on the road and it had been neglected for quite some time. So some of these were a little difficult to get off, but you know, just use the proper tools and put the appropriate amount of force on there. And if you have to, you can use some heat or something too. That's an old trick, but anyhow, in order to install the uh, driving sprocket for the uh, motorized bike, you got to do some disconnection here. So you got to take off that arm right there, which is part of the coaster brake system. You got to take off um, the nut and then uh, got to get inside there where the bearings are and some of the other innards. And then inside that tube right there are the two little teeny tiny plates that are uh, the actual brake shoes. You just gotta get your finger in there and remove it. Um, you know, while this bike was open right here, I went ahead and um, you know put some more grease in there. If you don't have a grease gun, it's super inexpensive. Go get one, super cheap. So I did notice that when I was um, removing this system here, that uh, when I removed that brake arm. The, uh, there was a space. So what I'm doing here with the Dremel and a little color wheel on the Dremel is I'm literally just creating uh, a spacer uh, that will fit in there. And unfortunately with this bike, it was um, the hole on the inside of the uh, that area right there for the spacer for the washer that I'm using uh, was not round, it was um, rectangular. So with the Dremel, I had to um, you know, cut in there and make it rectangular so it'll fit. So there you can see the rectangular portion of it. That's just the way that the little wheel bearing cap uh, was made. And then the, the way that the brake shoe and the, the brake system worked on there to keep it from spinning. So that's just a spacer. Um, you can just cut the brake arm off at length, but eh, you know, I might be able to use that in the future. So I'd rather you know, cut up a washer that will do that just in case I can use that brake arm in the future for something because it's already cut uh, at a good length. So that's the main sprocket, which is silver. And then what you got, what this kit comes with are uh, two rubberized kind of uh, pancake sandwiches type of things. And I'm not sure if there's a technical term on them. I just call them the rubber pancakes. And they go on either side of the new sprocket that's going in back there. And you'll notice that there are holes that are pre-drilled on these little rubber pancakes. Uh, and what you do is you wanna line those holes up with the holes that are also in the sprocket. And in order to 
get these little rubber pancakes around the drum of the wheel and then on the other side of the sprocket there uh, you got to cut them and this kit didn't even come with instructions I just knew this because I was I built an ADCC bike before uh, so I was familiar with this process and pretty much every standard kit you know these kind of China made uh, either ADCC or the 49 CC kits they're almost identical when it comes to the back portion here putting on the sprocket and what that sprocket does is it sandwiches on uh, through this you know clip mechanism with the rubberized pancakes and then also there's some uh, metal um, brackets that get screwed uh, in or not screwed but bolted into place there and what that does is that sandwiches that um, metal sprocket onto one side of the spokes so when the engine is running it's transferring all the power from the engine onto the sprocket and then from the sprocket uh, it's transferring all that energy onto the spokes which then turns the turns the wheels so you know you want to make sure you get a good fit in there you want to make sure this is um, bolted in uh, in a nice even format you don't want any wobbling in there so you don't want one side to be over tightened and one side to be under tightened so you know that would create like a wobbling effect you want it all to be nice and plumb and square for the lack of a better word there's that other part of the inside bracket there and there's three of those pieces and what you want to do is when you cut those rubberized uh, pancakes you want to stagger the cuts and then also stagger the cuts for the metal brackets so you can kind of see uh, in there on the top you can see the little line where I cut which is in between um, the break uh, well not the break the separation between the different metal brackets on uh, which I'm applying right now and you want to stagger those seams it's kind of like you know when you layer bricks or you know putting in flooring something like that siding anything like that you want to stagger the seams the same principle applies here you don't want to have all those seams you know line up together because that would be uh, a weak point so again you can see the seam in there and I put the bracket on this part uh, of uh, the mechanism and and staggered it there as well so you not only want to stagger both rubberized pancakes but then you also want to stagger um, the plates the brackets uh, on uh, which I'm applying right now on the inside of that so it takes a little bit of you know just a little bit of thought uh, to begin with um, but it's it's relatively simple it's common sense so I'm just hurrying up through here you apply um, the bolts to the to the nuts and I'll go in and do the staggered pattern uh, to go ahead and uh, tighten those down so they're nice and, e nice and even nice even pressure nice firm very firm even pressure on the spokes when you tighten these things down so I was just pointing to the actual sprocket and you'll notice that on this back sprocket here the drive sprocket it's convex or concave depending on how you are looking at it and that's uh, in order to line up the chain properly so I like to have the teeth of the sprockets side out that would be away from the hub rather than facing back in towards the hub I find it just gives the chain a little bit more room away from the rotating uh, spokes in the wheels uh, in order to uh, to do its job and you'll see when you you know put the wheel back on the bike um, what I'm talking about so this job right here is uh, installing the chain tensioner and I'm just going to hand tighten it right now it's really simple to put this together um, but when you put the chain on that runs in between that back uh, drive sprocket and it runs to the front of it runs to the engine this little chain tensioner is uh, adaptable so it you know you can adjust it forward and back on the little arm of the bike right there and then uh, in on the chain tensioner itself there's that little uh, clear or whitish looking plastic uh, wheel that the chain actually rests in you can actually adjust that a little bit too up and down just to make sure you have the proper tension 
And that acts as a guide and it also keeps the chain from, you know, flopping around uh, in the back there. So that's, that's important. You can buy an aftermarket chain tensioner that has a spring on it. Um, and those are really nice. I've never bought one. I just, you know, just use this and every once in a while, maybe I have to just go back and, you know, retighten. So what I'm doing here is, uh, you know, again, this bike was found on the side of the road. I have no clue what condition the bearings are uh, inside uh, your original pedal assembly inside here. Um, and unfortunately, you know, they were in pretty good shape. So I just disconnected this just to take a look at it. Uh, you can uh, attach a extended pedal um, assembly that comes with the kit it didn't fit this bike uh, because the hub here was much wider than the uh, the kit hub so it, it didn't fit uh, at all uh, this bike has a very wide hub right there um, and the extra little pat you know a pedal extender um, uh, that comes with the kit did not fit in there so uh, I was not able to use that and hopefully it'll give me enough clearance anyway around the engine. Uh, you can see right there, there's the existing bearings that are in there. And I just wanted to inspect in there and then also see if I could put that other extension, uh, pedal extension in there, but it, I wasn't able to do that. But everything looked good on inspection in there. And I, while I had it open, I went ahead and you know put some new new grease. See, there's some bearings on the other side there. So now I'm just going to, you know, tighten that back wheel and check things out and make sure everything's in alignment. You know, and sometimes you got to, you know, just put your hand on here and uh, move the wheel back and forth just a little bit before you do that final uh, tensioning uh, with the wrench. And uh, sometimes on these, I've actually had to put like a little crowbar or something in there uh, just to push the wheel back just to make sure. So everything's looking good on this installment. Thanks for following along on this series. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out with what we're trying to do here on YouTube. Thanks, everybody.